Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be explaining the process of how I take my daughter's hair from curly to straight and how I maintain the straight style before the next wash. This is what it looks like when she wakes up in the morning after sleeping with a satin bonnet. Whenever I'm taking the hair from curly to straight or vice versa, I like to start out by washing with a clarifying shampoo. Since I use one set of styling products for straight hair and one set for curly, I like to start off with a clean slate and remove all of that product buildup before switching from one style to another. And today I'm using Suave Daily Clarifying Shampoo. After washing with the clarifying shampoo, I use Cream of Nature's Argan Oil line, which is absolutely fantastic for all three of my kids' hair, as well as my own hair, which is chemically relaxed. And when I say the slip is amazing, it truly is. These products have so much slip. Both the shampoo and conditioner work well on their own, but when they're used together, you can just feel the tangles coming free in the shower. And even after rinsing, it's just so much easier to run a comb through it and style using your normal products. So this is after washing her hair with a clarifying shampoo, followed by the argan oil shampoo. And now I'm just applying the argan oil conditioner. And what I'm doing is just working in sections to completely saturate the hair, and then I go through and just finger comb through her curls. And finally, I grab sections and just squish the conditioner into her strands so that the product can fully coat and penetrate the hair shaft. Now you'll see I'm using a detangling comb to further evenly distribute the product. And this is literally the first time in the entire process so far that I'm running a comb through her hair and you can see that it just glides right through so, so easily because the shampoo and conditioner are just so good. And now I'm just twisting it up into a wet bun with the conditioner still in her hair. Then I secure it with a claw clip and finally I put on a plastic cap to deep condition for 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so this is after I've rinsed the conditioner out of her hair. And right now I'm just squeezing the excess water out onto a towel on the ground. And the first product I'll be using is the Frizz Ease Serum in Extra Strength Formula. This will help block out humidity to control frizz as well as provide heat protection from the blow drying and the flat ironing process. Although you can see I'm using multiple pumps, I actually wasn't using very much product. I just had a little trouble getting the product to come out right away. So usually I use about two pumps and that's enough. The next product I'll be using is Elastic QP's Feels Like Silk Liquid Hair Gel. This provides moisture without being too heavy. I wouldn't necessarily call this a lightweight formula because you can use too much of it, so just be advised that a little goes a long way, but as long as you don't overdo it, the hair should not feel greasy or weighed down. And just as a side note, if you're looking for this product, the packaging is now different, so don't let that throw you off, it's still the same product. It's just that I've had this bottle forever because I only use a tiny amount each time. Next, I'll be applying some mousse for more control and body. 
I usually use Tresemme Thermal Creations Volumizing Mousse just for extra heat protection, but I had just run out so I'm using this Vigoral Mousse which I got at my local beauty supply store. I wasn't too worried about it because her hair is very well conditioned and the serum I applied earlier provides heat protection as well. And now I'm just parting her hair to prepare to style it in a wet bun which she will wear all day at school. And the reason I do it this way is to stretch out the curls and allow her hair to air dry. Uh, her roots in particular are much easier to straighten after her hair dries this way. And then when she gets home and we start the straightening process, her hair is mostly dry and her curls are much more loose, which makes blow drying really quick and easy. So this is at the end of the day after going to school and playing outside and being active all day. And we are starting this after dinner so her hair has really had all day to dry, which is great because I won't be spending a long time finishing up with the blow dryer. As you can see, her curls are nice and loose and her hair, I'd say, is about 75% dry. I'll be using my Vidal Sassoon dryer, which has this comb attachment to get the hair really smooth. I am just not good with the round brush and dryer method. It just doesn't work for me. So this blow dryer is perfect and it's a lot easier for me to handle. So this is what the hair looks like when it's completely dry and I want to stress that you do want your hair to be totally dry before you use the flat iron. Otherwise you can singe your hair which will damage it and not to mention you can actually burn the scalp if you singe the roots. So always start the flat ironing process with totally dry hair. Now after each session that I blow dry, I immediately give it one pass with a flat iron because it will start to revert back to curly after a few minutes if I were to just blow dry and leave it like that. And you'll see I'm taking this very large dry section and using the chase method. And this is where you have the flat iron follow closely behind a fine tooth comb to get it extra smooth in one pass. I prefer to do it this way so that I don't have to chase every small section when I do the more fine tuned straightening. And that ends up saving me a bunch of time while I still get great results. Then I just repeat that same process on the rest of her hair. If you'll notice, I'm also lightly tapping the roots before each pass because you really don't want to have the iron just sitting there and having the hair accumulating heat so close to the scalp. So instead, I just use a little tension along with this tapping method to get the roots straight.
So this is what her hair looks like after blow drying and one pass with the flat iron in four large sections. Now I'm going to do the more fine-tuned straightening of small sections of the hair. I divided her hair in four large sections, and within those sections I just part the hair into even smaller sections that are about half an inch or less, and I flat iron those from root to tip. I'm also tapping the roots and using tension as I tap so that the iron isn't sitting on her roots and risking hurting her scalp. I prefer to use a rat tail comb to part the hair because it creates very precise lines, and because the tail is made of metal, there's no worry about snagging the hair on any damaged or jagged plastic and causing breakage when you're parting it. So while I'm doing this, I have Zia hold her hair sections because it just saves a lot of time compared to parting the hair, putting the comb down, twisting up the small section so it doesn't get mixed up with the already straightened hair, twisting up the large section, clipping the large section, etc, etc. And because I've done the prep work before this step, I only have to do one pass on each small section. And this goes by super fast, so she doesn't mind helping mommy with this part at all. So during this part of the video, I just thought I'd answer a question that I'm sure I'll get. If you're wondering about the temperature setting, I have the iron set to 410 degrees. And some people might be saying that that is super hot, and it is, but not all hair is the same. And I found that this is the ideal temperature to keep her hair totally smooth until the next wash day. And you also have to consider other things like the condition of the hair and how often you use heat. I keep the girl's hair very well conditioned and I do conditioning treatments on them regularly. If the hair is severely damaged or very dry, or if you're working with high porosity hair, I absolutely do not recommend using a flat iron at such a high temperature. You're just asking for heat damage. But with our hair care routine, I'm totally confident that heat damage will continue to just not really be an issue for us. After all, we've done this several times over the past couple of years, and as you can see, her hair has still been able to grow quite long and her curl pattern has always returned after the subsequent wash.
And I really wish I had turned her around for this part so the camera could see exactly what I was doing, but I'm basically just getting the little wispy hairs in the front now. Um, honestly, I should probably get a mini iron for this because using the big iron on these tiny sections just makes it take a little bit longer than it should because I'm just being so much more careful and kind of tentative with it. But all in all, it still turns out fine each time. The final step you'll see here is me just giving the ends a bump on a much lower setting of 250 degrees. I find that using a higher temperature for this step just doesn't work as well because the heat causes the curve to just be too like dramatic, I guess. And if you make a mistake, then it's harder to fix and just requires more heat. So I prefer to do this at 250 degrees so her ends have a nice naturally shaped curve to them. And this is the finished result. Super soft and smooth and shiny hair that's easy to manage. I straightened both the girls' hair this time because I was going out of town by myself and I wanted to leave my husband with something a little bit more manageable than their normal curls so that he could easily comb it for school and over the weekend. And he is really good about twisting it up into a bun and putting on their satin bonnets at night. So when I came back from my trip, their hair still looked great. And this is just Zia being silly and happy to be done. And the next thing I'll show you is how we maintain the look until the next wash. This footage is from a few days in after I got back from my trip and it's about an hour or so before bedtime. Each night to get ready for bed, I just start by brushing her hair with a wooden brush to distribute the oils from her scalp to the ends of her hair. I really don't use any additional products in her hair while it's straight, besides some gel around her edges which you'll see later. So it's really important to brush the hair once or twice a day with a good wooden bristle brush to get those natural oils all down the hair shaft and prevent tangles from forming. So after brushing her edges down with a boar bristle brush, I apply a little protein gel. And this stuff is great, it's not expensive and it's available at many beauty supply stores. Um, Dollar Tree even sells it in the smaller jars and it's pretty easy to find in the US. I like it because it controls flyaways, but it doesn't leave too much residue or buildup as long as you're using the appropriate amount. And as you can see, I'm not using very much. I just slick down her edges and then I twist her ponytail into a bun. And after about 20 minutes or so, it's dry enough to put on a satin bonnet and head to bed. And if you like, you can skip the gel until the morning, which I've actually been doing a lot recently. So I just do the gel first in the morning and let it dry while we're getting ready for school. And then I brush it out before we head out the door. And here's the next morning. I'm just gonna take off her satin bonnet and undo her bun and untwist the ponytail. and she's gonna be silly for the camera. So basically I just brush it and that's pretty much it. She is ready for school. And of course, more silliness before breakfast. And here is Zia's hair after another typical school day. I usually leave her hair straight for about two weeks before we wash it and go back to curly hair. And this is 10 days post straightening. And as you can see, 
Her hair just has a little more body to it from twisting it up at night, but it's overall still very sleek and smooth. And that is with zero touch-ups with the flat iron. So as long as you take care of the style, it should last a pretty long time. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but after we filmed the whole straightening process, I did give her a trim the following evening, which I do maybe every other time I straighten her hair. It's just easier for me to cut when it's dry and straight. But when her hair is curly and she happens to need a trim, I do take her into a salon and let an expert handle that. Turn around. <laughs> okay, turn back around. I also wanted to show you the results on Dylan's hair. I did basically the exact same process, the only difference is that Dylan's hair is a little thinner and not quite as curly, so drying and straightening didn't take quite as long. But oddly enough, even though Dylan's hair isn't as curly as Zia's, it does revert back to wavy or curly much more quickly, so by the end of the two weeks, it's pretty wavy again. And that's it! I hope you'll stop by my channel again soon. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know right when I upload new content. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! I feel like sleeping. Okay.